Hello everyone, the topic I will be talking about today is global fisheries and how we manage them. So why are fisheries important? I'm going to start off this presentation with an introduction to fisheries, placing them into a global context in hopes to helping you understand the importance they have for billions of people around the world. So let's begin. In 2017, capture fisheries worldwide contributed more than $152 billion to the global economy, 54% of which originated from developing countries. It is clear that fisheries around the world hold great importance, both as a source of income as well as a source of nutrition, with over a billion people relying on fish as their primary source of protein and at least 3.2 billion people deriving at least 20% of their energy intake from fish. So what are capture fisheries? Capture fisheries refers to the harvesting of wild caught fishes, excluding activities such as aquaculture. Capture fisheries production has remained relatively static since the 1980s at around 80 to 90 million tonnes, with a substantial portion of this originating in the Pacific Northwest, in which a total of 22.4 million tonnes was harvested in 2016. So there's capture fisheries, but how can we define these? There are three broad categories under capture fisheries. These are subsistence, artisanal and commercial. Subsistence fisheries refers to fisheries that is primarily carried out in poorer communities to directly feed one's family or community. These fisheries generally employ low-tech fishing techniques such as basic seine netting, hook and line, or traps. Artisanal fisheries, also commonly referred to as small-scale fisheries, can vary dramatically in size from small communities or family-based enterprises to a single human endeavour. Artisanal fisheries, however, sell or export their catch locally for an income as well as for nutrition. Commercial, also known as large-scale commercial, harvest product at a large scale to sell and export product worldwide. It is clear from these different types of fisheries that we must derive fishery, different fisheries management as it is quite clear, management for subsistence fisheries would not be a viable way of managing commercial fisheries. The reason fisheries management is so important is to avoid over-harvesting of resources, to allow for sustainability in the sector, as well as to avoid loss of biological function within the aquatic environment. Fisheries management extends from the community level up to the international level. An example of the international fisheries management is the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. This covers many different aspects of maritime law, not limited to fisheries management. This convention, enacted in 1982 and since ratified by 157 countries, outlines rules of stewardship relating to marine resource use. What was novel in regards to the Law of the Sea Convention was the adoption of the Exclusive Economic Zone, or the EEZ. What the EEZ does is grants sovereign rights to the states in relation to the areas surrounding their sea-bound borders. The EEZ generally extends from 12 nautical miles to 200 nautical miles off the coast. This idea has since been adopted by the Australian Commonwealth Government and contributes to the way in which our ocean resources are managed. The Australian Fisheries Management Authority is the federal government agency responsible for the effective and efficient management of Australia's fisheries resources within the EEZ. An example of how the Australian Fisheries Management Authority used the EEZ is zonation. This allows for clear boundaries to be placed, facilitating effective fisheries management. Different rules and regu regulations apply within 
different management zones, primarily depending on different biotic factors. For example, the northern prawn fishery has strict rules surrounding bycatch minimization due to the high risk posed to at-risk species, such, the, such as the federally, federally listed endangered Ridley's sea turtle. Referring back to the why of fisheries management. In essence, it is to avoid overfishing, but what is overfishing? Definitions differ, but it is broadly defined as the removal of marine organisms from the environment at a level that is not sustainable. This definition can be classified further into three categories. Recruitment overfishing, growth overfishing, and ecosystem overfishing. Recruitment overfishing occurs when the rate of fishing increases above the rate of replacement through the next generation's recruitment. Growth overfishing occurs when fish are harvested at an average size below that of which would provide maximum yield per recruit. And ecosystem overfishing occurs when such a level of fish are taken out of the environment that the balance of the ecosystem shifts as a result of the absence of the species. For example, the loss of a top water predator, such as a shark, results in an increase prey of in the increase in prey species. Such an effect may also be known as trophic release. The image shows here represents the loss of productivity within a marine zone as a result of ecosystem overfishing. Unfortunately, examples of such overfishing are well known in today's society. A well-known fisheries collapse is the collapse of the Atlantic Northwest Cod Fishery in 1993 as a result of overfishing across the previous four to five decades. Along with the cod, an entire eco economy based on the Atlantic cod in Newfoundland collapsed, resulting in the loss of employment of over 30,000 people. It is impacts such as these that the requirement of fisheries management is deemed necessary. So how is overfishing detected? Assessing exact stock numbers is impossible or is near to. So if stock numbers cannot be determined, how can we determine the health of a fishery? The answer, we use proxies to represent fish numbers. S such a proxy that is a proxy that is used extensively in fisheries is what is known as catch per unit effort, or CPUE. As it sounds, catch per unit effort classifies units of effort and the resulting catch. The units of efforts are relative as long as they are accurately representative of effort. For example, casts per hour or hours at sea. One should expect a stable fishery to have a stable CPUE. However, this is where flaws in the CPUE become evident. Catch per unit effort can easily overestimate stock abundance when critical variables are overlooked. One such variable is technology. The term technology creep is used in regards to the increased efficiency of harvesting techniques, which would appear to increase CPUE, whilst in reality, Stock abundance has not changed, only the gear has. Another is skill level. The different skills of fishermen can play a role in accurately determining stock abundance through CPUE. Better fishermen would have to exert less effort to increase catch. And finally, the life histories of species. Behaviour of fish can severely alter CPUE. As an example, Schooling fish can be easily targeted as a result of their schooling behaviour. When behaviour is well known, such as in the southern bluefin tuna, the species can be targeted, targeted with relative ease, regardless of stock size. Another assessment method is the maximum sustainable yield, or MSY. Whilst this is not a standalone assessment method and requires stock assessment, it is used to determine the sustainability level at which a fishery can be harvested. 
MSY is a theory that relies upon density-dependent growth. So in theory, population growth is at its maximum potential when population is roughly half its carrying capacity. You can see this from the logarithmic growth, cur growth curve on the slide showing rapid growth when population is half possible density. MSY represents this relationship. When fishing effort is at a level that is harvesting an amount that maintains maximum growth, similar to CPUE, MSY is not as straightforward as it seems. In the graph, maximum economic yield represents in the graph MEY represents maximum economic yield a point that represents the largest disparity between cost and revenue resulting in the largest profit research suggests that due to uncertainty in stock assessment MSY is often an overestimate of the actual um, har sustainably harvest rate Consensus falls amongst researchers at around 75% of MSY as a viable harvest level. So global assessment of fish stocks. Fish stocks are currently at their lowest recorded rate and recent trends suggest that this will continue for a while yet. The image on this page is produced by the FOA it's clear that current trends show a consistent decline in sustainable capture fisheries worldwide. A side note to this, on my personal opinion, I would like to draw attention to the term underfished, which may shed light onto some of the reasons why current trends seem dire. I understand this graph is used to represent how fish stocks are being utilised and the more can be sustainably taken. However, an underfished resource Still a, still a sustainably harvested fish stock. Again, I want to reiterate that it is a personal side note, but that I think it may hold water to some degree. So what is being done? There are efforts underway to reduce fishing pressure. One of these is aquaculture. Aquaculture is defined as by the cultivation of fishes for the purpose of sale, sale trade or barter. Currently, 53% of global fish, food grade fish production is aquaculture based, an increase from, five, from less than 5% in the 1980s. Global value of aquaculture is estimated at over $230 billion. Whilst there are flaws in aquaculture, it is touted as a valuable asset in the fight against fisheries stock depletion.